Hi guys and welcome back to Keep Smiling Adventures and today I am going to be sharing some of my do's and don'ts for a bike packing. Now if you're new to bike packing these might be useful if you are an experienced bike packer they might not be useful and this video is probably not for you but today we're going to go over a few things that I think you should probably definitely do if you're going to go on a bike packing trip and things that you should probably just not do. So let's get into this video, the do's and the don'ts of bikepacking. Okay, so first let's start off with the don'ts of bikepacking. And number one on our list is... Don't ride stuff you are not confident enough to ride, whether you are on a multi-day, week-long or massive epic trip. These trips are not the time to start taking unnecessary risks on the trails. Knowing your limits is a very important thing to understand while on bikepacking missions. The last thing you want to do is have to end an adventure early all because you decided to ride a trail that was too technically hard for your abilities and you end up getting injured. Bikepacking trips are not the time to start throwing caution to the wind and sending it down trails that you have no idea what is coming Take more caution on the trails during your bike packing missions. Save the dangerous stuff for the weekend rides with your friends. Improving your skills is a great thing to do and something you should definitely continue to do, but just not on the bike packing trips. Remember, on bike packing trips, you are always to ride within your limits. Everyone will tell you this and you will still every time take too much stuff. But understand that you do not need to take as much stuff as you think you do right now. The only real way to find out what you truly need to take is going on a bikepacking adventure though. Now this is different for everyone on what you really need to take but I'd recommend going on a two to three day trip even if it's just locally and when you get back pretty much remove as much of the stuff you didn't bother to use. You might be quite surprised just how much stuff you were carrying around for no real reason and the heavier your load is the harder you have to work so getting your kit scaled down to as much as you feel comfortable is important. What you will need to take does vary from person to person, but as long as you can stay dry and warm at night, comfortable while riding and fed and hydrated along your journey while keeping your bike working, most of the other stuff will be luxury items that you need to decide if it is worth the extra weight to carry. Rubbish is well, quite frankly, rubbish. Whether it is rubbish from food packaging, broken bike parts, stuff it back into your bike bags and either dispose of it when you get home or in actual bins when you come across them. There is no reason to dump it along the trails. You have managed to get it there. You can definitely get it to a bin. While while camping, don't have fires. I know you might think that is the perfect way to end the day sat by a campfire. And while I'll agree it is nice, if you are wild camping, you are probably not supposed to be there. So having a campfire is generally a terrible idea. The idea of wild camping is to leave no trace. Well, having a fire is going to do a bit more than leave no trace. It is going to display your location unless you have permission to have a fire from whoever owns the land or it's an actual emergency and you need a fire to survive then just don't have a fire remember there is no set in stone rules with bike packing you do it how you want to whether that's to ride it as fast or as slow as you like, that is completely up to you. 
You may hear people say you need this and that and the other, but ultimately the adventure and how it goes is down to one person, yourself. Maybe you would rather stay in B&Bs instead of camp, and that is absolutely fine. The only correct way to set up a bike for your bikepacking adventure is the way you want to set it up. Whether that is using panniers or bikepacking bags, a full suspension mountain bike or a touring bike, just remember your adventure, your goals, your way. Do a shakedown ride before you go. A shakedown ride is something you should 100% do before any packing trip. To not only make sure your bike is working nice and how it should, it is also a great way to get a feel for your bike while it is fully loaded, as the difference can be quite surprising if you have never ridden a fully loaded bike before. Get out on a couple overnighters to make sure you are ready. This is a great way to practice setting up your camp for the night if you are camping and an opportunity to practice repacking and unloading your bike while on the trails. This will give you the opportunity to iron out anything you don't like about your setup and a great opportunity to make sure you are carrying everything you will need. While on bikepacking trips, it goes without saying that your number one tool for the job is your bike. So being able to maintain and fix problems that arise on your bike is a crucial skill for anyone who wants to go on a bikepacking trip. This means knowing how your bike works and what tools you need to get yourself rolling again. You should definitely know how to do these few things at the minimum fixing flat tires, the basic understanding of truing a wheel, fixing a broken chain and understanding how your gears work. These things will be the basics of what you should know about your bike to keep you rolling through your adventure. It's important to understand how your body will feel during these rides and to understand what your body needs to continue on your journey. Understand that just because you might feel like quitting now doesn't mean you actually need to quit. Perhaps it's just that you need to stop and eat some food. Simple things like even having a little wash can change the way you feel. You will go through so many emotions when doing bikepacking trips, whether that's the happy times or the low times. If you understand how your body feels and what it needs to keep going, you'll be able to enjoy your trips a lot more. Learning this only comes with practice, so the more time you spend outside on the adventure, you will learn what works for you, and more importantly, what doesn't. Understanding when your body needs to rest and enough is enough is a crucial skill to avoid injuries and making sure you reach your goals while out on the bikepacking missions. Rewarding yourself at certain points in your adventure is a great way to stay motivated. Whether that be a night in a hotel with a nice hot shower or just an extra couple of hours in camp every now and again. Having some of your favorite food or just stopping to enjoy the views here and there are all great ways to help. Now this is the most important one to do while on bike packing trips. And that is, do enjoy it. The most important part about any adventure in my eyes is to enjoy it, even if at the time it isn't all that enjoyable. Normally being able to tell the story afterwards just is. Embrace them tough times and enjoy them magical moments. However your adventure goes in the end, just know that you did what so many people don't do. You went on an adventure. And that is what counts. So guys, they are my do's and don'ts for bikepacking. What do you think? I would love to know. Leave some comments down below. What are your do's and don'ts while out on your bikepacking adventures? And until next time, keep smiling, enjoy the adventure.